Today is the third Sunday of the Blessed Month of Tut, but today we focus on the third day of the Blessed Feast of the Cross. The Church wants us to linger on this feast a little bit longer. The Church wants us to not rush away from it. The crucifixion is our whole life as a Christian. The cross that was certain death for our Lord Jesus Christ has become our guarantee of life. A guarantee that God loves us and we can't even, we can't even fathom. So the church lingers here and reminds us with the words of our Lord that we must, each of us must carry our cross. In verse 27 it says, and whoever does not bear his cross and come after me, cannot be my disciple. One of the Eastern Fathers says, When you bear your cross, it is then that you feel an indescribable delight, a wonderful inner peace, and joy such as you never have experienced before. And at the same time, you will feel an influx of spiritual strength. Prayer will become easier, and your faith will become stronger. But someone might ask, what does it mean to carry our cross? I think sometimes we have misunderstandings. What does it mean to carry your cross? Let's try to unpack that. Underline and try. To carry the cross means to do the thing that is difficult to do in your life because it is well-pleasing to God. Typically, typically, this is something that's painful. Typically, this is something that feels like a kind of death. If it were something easy, it would not be called a cross. If it, it would be called more like a luxury, a pleasure. So this is part of the equation in carrying the cross. It's a complete obedience to Christ, even when it's painful. If we are successful in carrying our crosses, then it will be a suffering. I'm going to repeat that. If we are successful in carrying our crosses, it will be a suffering. It will be. But it will bring us purification. It will bring us sanctification. It will give us life. And possibly to those around us. What are the examples of carrying one's cross? Well, an example of carrying a cross that might be difficult, it might be a difficult marriage. It might be a difficult marriage that we choose to work and, and, and stay in and really struggle through so as not to fall into sin. Carrying the cross might be caring for a spouse or a child or a loved one who is very sick and needs assistance all the time. Carrying the cross might be dealing with a difficult coworker or a fellow student or a difficult teacher or a difficult a boss, carrying a cross might be learning to live with a sickness yourself or a disease that you have come across. And then the world gives different solutions to these things. But we have to reject those whispers because they are veiled in compassion, but underneath there's lies. There's lies. It seems that we carry the cross of our sinfulness and our sinful desires. I think this is where most of us can relate. I mean, that's where I can relate. We can carry the cross by struggling against these desires and bring them to Christ daily. You can acknowledge this desire as real and powerful, but you can also accept that following this desire is not good for you. It's not good for you. It damages your soul. It puts a, a great wall between you and God. It may seem like the most painful thing is to live with such a desire and you have no outlet for this desire. It may seem like there's unfulfilled desire that this might even kill you. It's that painful. Now you understand. Now you are starting to understand the meaning of carrying the cross. And we carry it with faith. Because we are people of the flesh, our desires are often for things of this world, pleasures of this life. 
But the Lord has told us that we could have the whole world, yet, yet we would lose our soul and our life in the process, like we mentioned in the Vespers reading last night. So if someone can offer you the whole world on a platter, you have to understand that it's not for free. There is a cost. There is a cost. There will be a toll. And it could be the toll that is, will be taken could be the cost of your soul. So we are forced daily to ask ourselves, what can a man give in return for his soul? What is my soul worth? What am I willing to sell out for? The ultimate sellout is the one who gives away the gifts that he didn't earn, but gained by the grace of God. Don't be a sellout. Don't run. Don't run from the cross. Christians cannot be afraid to struggle. We cannot be afraid of pain. Our Lord Jesus Christ did he struggle? Did he not feel pain? No. Instead, we turn, we turn into our prayers and we say, Lord, you know my life and you know my struggles better than I know myself. Help me be brave. Help me, give me the strength to carry the cross that you have given me. I'm convinced this cross is for my salvation. We say this in our prayers. In our gospel today, the Lord says, whoever does not bear his cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. He's very clear. It's, it's very clear. Those are very difficult words for us to, to process. I think we live in comfort. Our pantries, our bellies are full. And so it's really difficult for us to understand what it means to deny ourselves of anything. So, we fast. This is the beauty of the church. We fast, we pray in order to allow ourselves to be molded by God. And He uses these tools to shape us and to form us so that we can learn how to deny ourselves. We don't always get what we want. We deny our temptations, we deny our personal will. We deny our definition of life in order to accept Christ as our life. We deny our opinions about what is right and what is wrong. We deny our identity to take on His identity for us. I don't care about who I am. I care about who I am in Christ. And we allow God to define what is normal and what is sane and what is good. We deny all of these things in order to accept the truth and holiness and salvation that comes from our Lord Jesus Christ. All of life is a series of choices, a series of forks in the road. At every single fork in the road, we are given an important choice. Either we turn left and follow whatever the desire is in our hearts and whatever that may be, or we can deny ourselves. And we can turn right, and we can follow after our Lord Jesus Christ. We are given this choice out of love. We are given this choice to do what feels right, or to do what is right. How often do we find ourselves in the middle of the struggle? Maybe it's been seasons of our life that it feels like we're in this, this type of struggle every single day. It's relentless. We constantly have to reflect on where we are and what we're seeking in life. And we're called to do this with sobriety of mind. Satan offered the whole world to our Lord Jesus Christ only if you would bow to him. It's offered to you as well. You can have it. You can have the whole world. But you can't keep it and you can't definitely um, have it, uh, your soul intact. Sacrifices must be made either way. Either it's a sacrifice for our soul in order to gain our wants and our desires, or it's a sacrifice of our wants and our desires in order to gain our souls renewed in Christ. 
Every single day, Christians have to do and choose the way of denial, the way of the cross. Whether we are husbands or wives or parents or friends, whatever stage of life that you're in, every single day is an opportunity to see just how far we can go in setting aside our wants. A lot of the marital problems that we face in our marriages could be worked on with this idea. How much can I let go of my want? Me, me, me. And think about other. Even though sometimes these uh, wants are very powerful and they actually feel like needs. They might feel like needs. It's important that we're told that unless we follow this way, we don't really belong to Him. Those are not my words. So the clear and powerful sign of our life belonging to our Lord Jesus Christ is that we submit ourselves and our desires and our lives to Christ on a daily basis. And we learn through failing and repentance and renewed struggle to offer everything back to Christ. If we step back and examine our own lives, we find that oftentimes we run towards sin and we run away from the cross. We have been like Adam, the disobedient. And our Lord says, be imitators of me. Be imitators of me. If he is the obedient, faithful son who ran in the direction of the cross when everybody else would run naturally the other way. Where Adam to ran towards what was best for himself, our Lord ran towards the thing that would be the worst of all. Where Adam ran and cursed mankind, our Lord ran towards the cross with each one of us in his mind. That is the love of God that he has for mankind. In the various uh, religions of the world, sacrifices are brought to appease the gods. In Christ crucified, we see the final and perfect sacrifice offered by God himself on behalf of all and for all. The instrument of death becoming the ladder to eternal life. So, when we focus on the cross, it is a gift. Because God is allowing us to understand that we are sharing in the sufferings of His Son. Have you ever thought that suffering is a privilege? I'm going to repeat that. Have you ever thought that suffering is a privilege? It's true. It is a privilege. Listen to the words of St. Peter. In 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 14. But even if you should suffer for righteousness' sake, you are blessed. I want to encourage you to take a few moments of your day and say, Thank you, Lord, for allowing me to share in your sufferings, even in this very small way. When we begin to get used to suffering for our Lord, then He gives us an even greater gift. He allows us to share in more than his sufferings, he allows us to share in his resurrection, in the glory of his resurrection. And the church is asking us to die to ourselves and to live in Christ, to run towards the sufferings of the cross. And if we want to be true imitators of him, to become like our Lord, then we have to run to the cross with courage. Because we understand that God is with us when we suffer. Nothing can be more comforting than that. Nothing. We understand that only the cross brings salvation. So we have to respect, we have to almost revere the crosses and the struggles that God has given to each one of us. Because we are, we are sons and daughters of God through baptism, and whatever a son and daughter of God faithfully carries, when they carry their crosses, multitudes of people are sanctified through this heroic act.
And in this way, every one of us is given the opportunity to live the life of Christ and to choose the hard way and to deny yourself. St. John Chrysostom writes, Through the cross, we learn the power of love and we're taught to die for others. I'm going to repeat that. Through the cross, we learn the power of love and we are taught to die for others. So I pray that we can examine the difficulties and the hardships that we have been allowed by God and to be thankful and to trust that through perseverance and through faithfulness, God can transform what is difficult and painful in your life into something truly wonderful and holy. And glory be to God forever. Amen. Amen.